Uh, now, I know you reached out to a priest to uh, connect you to, or put you in contact with the coyotes. Yeah. What's the relationship with the priest and the coyotes or, or the organized well, the, crime? The priest is basically um, this uh, gentleman named Father Priscilliano, and he uh, was the priest of the, the whole town, and he blesses all of the migrants before they go off on their journey. And so he knows this issue all too well, and he has seen hundreds and hundreds of people die. Um, and, or, and so he just wanted the story to get out there. So when he found out we were in town and he liked us and he thought that we were going to do the story justice and, and you know, bring it out to a wider audience, he really wanted to do everything he could to help. So he, you know, him being a big cheese in the area, went around and pulled a lot of strings for us. Now, Juan Carlos, was that the case when you decided to cross over the coyote was um, working together with organized crime? Uh, actually, I, I don't know exactly, but uh, the, it seems to me that they, 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 they get a lot of money and they have a lot of equipment, a lot of stuff available for them. Uh, right now, it's different, a different story. Like um, uh, he, he was saying to us, uh, actually, uh, because uh, I have friends that just recently closed, they, they know that they have to pay a higher price right now. I pay, and, and at that time, it was like $100 for me. Right now is like a, what three thousand, five thousand, depends, you know. You said three hundred. Three hundred. I mean, it was compared to these times, it's so easy. I mean, it was cheap, but uh, it has the risk, but not as a uh, 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 present time. So, Christoph, when you made the deal with the coyote, what exactly was the deal? Um, well, we we uh, basically. Uh, came up with an agreement that he would uh, allow us to uh, come along and, and mm -hmm. go on the journey that he was planning on going, and um, uh, and we'd be allowed to film. And uh, but you know, it took a lot of trust. And I mean, uh, it's a typical scenario for people that want to cross the border. It's with a coyote is you get what you pay for, and um, some migrants pay. You know, probably the cheapest is probably about these days is still fifteen hundred dollars. Um, but that's is that what you paid? Um, well, we didn't. We, we, you know, we worked out a different kind of arrangement, um, and uh, we. Uh, but, you know, there are people that will pay as much as you know five thousand dollars for a more secure route. Um, but uh, it can be really, it can be really rough. What was the ambience like with you and the coyote? And I know you were you got to follow another migrant too. There were parts of there were parts that were a little there was some tension sometimes like when we kind of finally found ourselves out on our own like through the desert even before we crossed there were definitely some communication issues the coyote was I think he wasn't quite telling us but I think that he started to have some second thoughts about who, who like what am I actually doing with these guys <laughs> like am I really going to cross the border with them um, and. Uh, you know, he had a lot, he, there was a lot of concern if, you know, if, if he got caught with us, would that mean more jail time or whatever, even though it doesn't, he, you know, there was just a lot of concern. This was a new thing bringing us across. So I think there was, there was, um, uh, there was some time to build trust between us, but ultimately, you know, he, he also, he was agreeing to take us because he also thought it was an important story to tell, um, of just what he goes through as well to get people mm -hmm. across the border. Um, uh, you know, a lot of coyotes are pretty bad dudes, but there's also some that are really, you know, uh, are saving people's lives to get them across. And um, uh, so. Now, I know you were hoping to follow a large group of migrants to document their stories and why they're coming here, but that didn't necessarily work out. When you crossed, w did you cross with a big group too? Yeah, we were right. like a, um, 12 people in with uh, two coyotes, 10 of us, and they were four girls or four females with us in the group. Did you see any sexual tensions between the women that were present? Uh, well, actually, yes. Uh, one of the, the, the coyotes were, were more aggressive to the girls. and By aggressive, uh, you mean? Uh, abusive, abusive. He wants to do advancements of them, but... Um, were any of them raped? No, no, they, 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 they didn't, because we, uh, in that moment, uh, even though we don't know each other, we we start, you know, get banned, and, and we males we being became protected to the girls, and we actually defended from the coyotes. I remember that. So the relationship with the coyote, you know, the man that was taking you, it was not. 
per se a healthy Yeah, one. he was not uh, not uh, smooth. You know, sometimes uh, he want to punish us uh, because of that situation, protecting the girls, not giving us food, not giving us water. Or even though the, the crossing was kind of fast, but he made us a star, uh, like at least one day. Star? Yeah, <laughs> no food, no water. And doing this crossing without food, yeah. you need all yeah. the energy you can, you can get. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it's a very long journey, and they have these, um, in some places and, or cities of Mexico, they have these guest houses, which like you explained, they're more like prisons in a sense, because they, you know, they mm -hmm. cram all these people in there. Were you in any while you were crossing? No, actually, uh, th these, these coyotes have uh, um, uh, rooms in a hotel rented already for us. And yeah, they put us like um, a, a lot of people in there. But uh, our group was the, the, the smallest one. We were like a 10 people on that room only. But yeah. it was small for everybody. Right, I know you visited one while you were in Altar, Mexico. Yeah. What were the conditions like inside? Um, they're really rough. I mean, they're literally uh, just slates where they just pile people next to each other, not individualized beds. I mean, mm -hmm. it looks like, you know, it's a, it's a difficult comparison to make, but honestly, they look like cattle cars almost, yeah. like just piling people in. And uh, what was what was hard to convey on camera because we weren't allowed in when they when they were really stacked full. They just kind of wanted us to, to you can come in briefly, see what they look like. But you know, just being on the inside, the heat just how hot they are. And just to imagine that this is how somebody sleeps the day before they're supposed to make one of the most difficult journeys in the world. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it's not exactly a good night's sleep um, uh, in the conditions. So it's, it's, it's rough. So often when people are already just beginning the journey, they're already worn out. So like we mentioned before, you, um, you were hoping to follow a large group of migrants. And at some point before you started your journey on foot, you did meet up with another group. Correct. Yeah, we. Did you speak to any of them? Yeah, we. Um, uh, basically, how the system works is it's very organized, and you're. Uh, when we were suddenly told that we had permission, we were going to go. There's a coyote. We were put in a van that drives. That these vans drive all day long. Just dozens and dozens and dozens of vans all day long, uh, drive people up right up to the border, um, where there's basically a holding pen, like a pasture, where people wait for their opportunity to cross. And you can be there for an hour. You can be there for 12 hours. You never really know. And we went up there and we're planning on meeting up with um, uh, you know, different groups there because that's where everybody uh, waits. And we get up there and it was a lot longer to get there than we thought. People were exhausted from the van ride when they got there. Everyone was kind of sleeping. So we spoke to a couple people that you know, were all about us going. And then um, before we knew it, we looked around and everyone was gone. People just took that opportunity. It's a split second. We have the opportunity to go, you go. And we found ourselves without our group. And so luckily we still had our coyote who waited for us and one other guy. But at that point we were, we ended up being on our own. Um, so, uh, and we didn't really have, there was no turning back. <laughs> so, yeah. um, uh, so that's kind of what So like, like you said, it is a very organized um, um, journey or it's yeah. very organized people. They know exactly what they're doing. And you came to a checkpoint um, where you were stopped by a, a few men. Let's take a quick look at a clip from that. Hey, uh, Christoph, uh, we may see somebody with a gun. Just keep your camera down. Signing off for right now. All right, we just went over a uh, checkpoint. Uh, there was about five guys. Wait. Yeah? No. No. What I wasn't supposed to say is that there were five guys dressed head to toe in black all with AK-47 assault rifles. So, Christoph, when you came to that checkpoint, what did they tell you or ask? Well, that's where you, we really got the sense of, the, uh, of how corporate this thing really is. They were, the guys, uh, we'd gone through already a police checkpoint, we'd gone through an army checkpoint, now we're at a checkpoint that was all guys dressed in black and it was clear that this was, these guys were working for the narcos. Um, but they knew that they had been given the, the call to let us through and you could just tell, this is where, it was kind of like when, you know, uh, people maybe lower down the ladder in like a corporate uh, company and office building, you know, where this, they get a call from, you know, corporate executives mm -hmm. telling them to do something. They just, oh, they have no idea what it's like down here. I can't believe who's, who's telling us to do this, but they just have to do it. 